Hey guys, how you doing? Ron's a nut here. Today I have a how-to video for you. This is a how to install the EK RAM Dominator modules uh, on your uh, RAM. Now, uh, up until recently, if you wanted to use a EK uh, RAM Dominator water block such as this one, this is a Times 2 um, the only RAM that you can install it on was the Corsair Dominator series. So there's only a couple of different sets depending on speed, but the key to that was because of the way this water block is designed, there's a slot on either side for you to uh, screw down this water block on top of your RAM. Now, obviously, if you have uh, anybody else's RAM, not the or even a Vengeance RAM from Corsair, you couldn't do it because the heat sinks are, you know, they have their signature uh, designs. And in order to do that, you would have to, you know, somehow figure out a way to screw them down or mount them to the top of the blocks. So basically you really could not do it. Um, so you had to stick with you know the Dominator series. But uh, since then EK has come out with uh, these Dominator modules which basically replace the skins on your RAM with these skins and the skins on top here have uh, mounting points for you to screw in the, the EK Dominator water blocks. So what I'm going to do um, here now is show you how to remove the skin off of a memory module. I happen to have a Hyper Beast, a Kingston Hyper Beast that I'm going to take apart. But there are different uh, modules and I'll talk about how I do it on this one. Hopefully that will help you uh, understand what you need to go through if you're going to do it to some other RAM. Alright, so let me get the uh, table situated here um, to, uh, to do that. Um, but basically, just so you know what comes in the kit, when you buy a kit, it comes in two pieces and you get the instructions. You'll get um, two sets of the RAM Dominator module adapters and basically it's, you know, two sides that'll screw together that will go on either side of your RAM stick. And so there's enough to do two modules and you get four pieces of, um, of uh, uh, thermal pads that you would put one on either side of your RAM stick. And the screws to secure the sides of the Dominator adapter modules together. So next thing to show you here is actually um, how to remove the uh, stock heat sink off of your RAM stick. And uh, like I said, this is some Kingston Hyper Beast. And uh, most of these uh, heat sinks are, are held in place by either some glue or adhesive pads uh, that are in sandwiched between the stick and the um, heat sink. So in order to help do that, to remove them, and most RAM sticks are the same, um, but basically what you're really going to do is you want, you're going to have to peel them off, but you want to peel them off certainly without damaging or destroying the, uh, the RAM stick at all. So in order to do that, uh, I have a couple of tools that I have here. I'm going to use a uh, flathead, a small jeweler's flathead, so that I could do some prying in there. I have a basically a credit card would work, or this is a, uh, you know, it's something that I use occasionally when I used to spread thermal compound around. But it's a credit card that would work fine, and that'll allow me to get in here without, um, you know, it's not a real sharp edge, and it'll give, so it'll allow me to pry in there. But probably one of the most important things to do is is to heat it up. Now I have a heat gun and I'm going to put it on like it's medium setting and heat up one of the sides of the uh, heat sink so that it transfers through to the glue or the adhesive on the pads underneath there and then I'm going to use the tools to pry it up. So uh, let me get the table um, cleaned up a little bit here and then I'll show you exactly uh, uh, the process that I use to remove the heat sinks from, uh, from, these, um, from this stick here. Now I'm going to try here to show you, I don't know if you can see it at all, I'm going to get in, but I can see on either side of this uh, Kingston RAM there's some adhesive uh, pads over on this end. I can't really tell if there's any in the middle, there might be, um, but what I'm going to do is heat up these here and there's also a couple of little ridges as part of this design that I'm going to slide the credit card or the screwdriver in to try to pry it up, but first I'm going to heat it up. So. I have the uh, RAM here. I'm going to put this, uh, this Wagner dryer um, has a low and a high setting. Right now I'm going to start with the low setting.
and even on the low setting I can feel the the heat um, build up so actually I'm gonna try the credit card right now and look at that just from heating it up like that on this side all I did was using this credit card I just filled it up and that and it popped off you saw this I've not done that before on this RAM at all so now what I'm gonna do is uh, the other side and actually uh, this RAM connects together the, the heatsink connects together so I was able to take one off I'm gonna do the same thing again here now put it on low kind of spread the heat Let's see if that's enough. Yeah, I can feel that. Heat spreader works good. All right. Well, that was, uh, that was pretty straightforward. So a little bit of heat, a um, little bit of heat will do you. So you saw how quick and easy it was to remove. And again, that's with this. And they, they use um, thermal pad uh, adhesive, double-sided adhesive tape, I guess, is what they use on there. So, all right, now let me get the pieces out and let's assemble uh, one of the uh, Dominator adapter plates to this RAM. All right, I have the uh, two pieces of thermal pads and I have the, uh, the two mounting plates. I guess one you might want to call the front plate it actually has the uh, EK logo on it. And it says RAM Dominator Module Adapter and then this is the back plate. I have the three screws with the uh, Allen head uh, tool to secure it. Now one of the things um, to note is that the thermal pad they give you is not long enough, at least for this RAM stick, to cover all the, the uh, pieces without trimming it. So in order to um, cover each of your ICs on both sides, you're going to have to trim them up. So I have uh, eight, there's eight RAM um, ICs on this side of the board, so I'm going to trim this up into uh, eight pieces. And then uh, we'll apply them and we'll get on with it. So uh, I'm not going to bore you with uh, cutting up uh, thermal tape. Okay, I have the thermal pads cut up. Actually, I cut up for enough for uh, both sides, of course. And uh, remember, these uh, thermal pads have a, a coating on both sides. There's a protective layer on one, it's usually a white, the white backing. And then there's a thin plastic piece on the, on the top. So, um, so you need to remove both. Now, Depending on, you know, these are not necessarily adhesive, um, but they are soft enough that they usually would adhere to the um, to the RAM stick when you put it on there, onto the memory. Now, one of the things that they don't have any instructions to do, but I like to do, is sometimes I put uh, a dab of uh, thermal compound on each of the uh, uh, each of the chips to make sure that uh, number one, it's not going to hurt. It's uh, you know, it's conductive. Um, thermal compound so you just put a tiny little dab and it actually helps to keep the thermal pad on the IC so that's something you can do if you find a pad um, is not staying or, or sticking to your ICs and so far this looks like this guy is going to be fine so I'm just going to I'm going to do it without it but that is something you can do I often do it when I have uh, graphics cards the memory chips on graphics cards and some of the VRMs too all right now Obviously, one of the things uh, that I didn't mention at the beginning, but I'll tell you now, before you go this route and you take apart your, uh, your heat sinks off your RAM, you want to be checking your RAM to make sure you don't go through all of this and find out you got a bad RAM stick. So, um, needless to say, I have tested this RAM, and I, I know that it works uh, just fine. I've actually even overclocked with it. So, um, it's good stuff, but you want to make sure that you're in good shape with your RAM sticks before you you go to this level and disassemble it. Now, depending on the, uh, the RAM manufacturer, um, you, know, I, you know, they may or may not be able to tell, and you might be voiding warranty. So just be aware that uh, if you're going to do this, you do this at your own risk, but make sure, I highly recommend, you check out your RAM before you take it apart, before you take the heat sinks off of it. All right, so now what I'm going to do is continue to put the uh, thermal pads on the uh, on the ICs and so I'll cut back once I have that done on both sides okay I have pads cut for one side and I'll tell you why I only did one side because I uh, 
I originally had the pads cut, and uh, you know they're they're moist. Well, they're they're a little bit sticky, although there's no adhesive on them. Just the nature of the thermal pad they use. And I flipped it over to put on the back side of this uh, the adapter module. And what happened was I didn't have a chance to line it up, and the thermal pad stuck very well to this plate. So what I recommend is before you do it, because you have to line up the uh, the uh, memory stick in the right spot. You want to get it centered. So you actually you can slide it around on here and then you would have to put this plate on here. So what I recommend from uh, my own uh, lessons uh, learned here is to uh, put the pads on one side, lay your memory stick in. Now I have not done the other side yet and I'm not going to secure it down but because this these pads will stick to this plate what I'm suggesting is you align it up first. So I have it uh, pretty much centered and then I'm going to apply this plate put it down right over where the screws will go in and then I'm going to flip it over so now I have it lined up on the IC on the ICs and now this the thermal pads on the other side are keeping it in place on this back plate and so now I don't want to remove it because those pads will come off and then I'm going to have to realign it so basically put the pads on Place it on the the uh, the front piece of the of the adapter plate, and then line up your back plate. Push it down, and then uh, you know remove it, and then you'll have it already uh, aligned up. So now all I have to do is put the pads on here, and then secure it together. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, we now have the thermal pads on the other side, and now what I'm going to do is. Uh, Actually, like I did before, since this is already stuck because of the pads I put on the other side, I'm going to uh, lift it up. And then what I need to do is line up the plates so that the uh, screw holes uh, match right on top. key to that is making sure you do it so the pads don't move. All right. So what I did is I picked it up and then just aligned up the holes and sandwiched it uh, together. Now, and I'm looking on the on the inside and I don't know if there's a, there's light behind the camera but I don't know if you can see you can actually see the thermal pads uh, you know, aligned up over the ICs. None of them uh, adjusted at all. So they, they stuck pretty well. I, I was off maybe a millimeter and I slid it a, a tiny bit, but it didn't, uh, it didn't cause any of the thermal pads to come dislodged. So, so if, as long as you're uh, relatively good at lining up the pads and flipping this over without moving the, uh, the ramp stick, you should be good to go. So now all I'm doing is putting in the uh, screws and right now I'm just putting, I'm not really tightening up the, uh, tighten it up all the way. And the instructions tell you not to crank it down too tight because you could strip. Um, so I'm just uh, putting it in, giving it a good like quarter turn after it's hand tight. And there we have um, a Ram Dominator uh, adapter on a Kingston Hyper Beast Ram. And now, once I have the other one and installed on my motherboard, uh, I have I can then install this, um, you know, the EK RAM Dominator water block. And to install those, you are required to put um, either thermal pads or thermal paste along the top, so that it conducts from the the heat of the chips will go through the thermal pads, of course, to the to this new heat sink, and then this new heat sink will the heat will then uh, elevate up through and be cooled by the water touching it. Now again, most of these water-cooled RAM blocks are for, for me, I use them for bling, for sure. They look awesome. I think they look fantastic. And they will certainly cool it. And this is a nice uh, piece of uh, uh, aluminum on here. So this in itself will radiate the heat very much like the plate that was used by Kingston. So, so there we go. That's how you install a uh, RAM Dominator Module Adapter, and I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, the next one.
and exactly how I did this one. And then we'll be able to install it on the motherboard and install the RAM block. So uh, I hope uh, you liked this video. If you did, please like and favorite. And if you're so inclined, please subscribe. And if you're interested to see the finished product of the system that I'm building in this video, um, I'll put a um, you know I'll put a link up to the last one in the uh, build log, and you'll be able to uh, take a look and continue through and see uh, what system uh, I'm using this in. It's uh, it's actually a mini ITX build with a Case Labs case, and um, it's going to come out awesome. But uh, this video was a how-to on how to install EK RAM Dominator adapters onto any other uh, RAM stick module, and uh, hopefully that's what I did for you. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. That's it from Runs and Nut. So.